Welcome back to another dev vlog. Now it's been quite a while. I don't remember when I did the last one. Was it like the previous year? Or have I done one this year? I'm not sure. But in any case, welcome. Um, if you remember the previous dev vlog, as you can see, there's a lot of changes. Some more obvious than others. So let's start with the most obvious ones. First of all, the terrain is completely different. It's starting to look a lot more cake-like and a lot closer to the final product that I would be trying to go towards. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to be the final cake that I end up using for this area in the end, but it's kind of a start. Like, this is kind of the vibe I'm trying to get with the terrain. Also made a few trees for this area, a few fences even, and there's a few more decorations that I haven't really gotten to use yet. And so this is kind of the start, the vibe I'm trying to go with for the cake area. And I feel like it's starting to look nice. But there is another obvious change here that you might have noticed. The camera is also different. Now, this isn't really a huge change code-wise, but it changes entirely how the camera feels in the basic gameplay. Now, instead of the cam if instead of the player actually being at the very center of the camera they will instead move around and have quite a bit of wiggle of wiggle room wiggle room like the camera will only kind of try to track towards them as you can see it does turn around a bit but it's not gonna fully rotate with the player until they get too far away from the center so that's the next significant change the camera is now a lot more free and a lot less likely to give you motion sickness as you move around. Or at least I hope so. <laughs> I'm really not sure how that goes and I won't really be able to until it's time for the demo. Uh, we'll get to that later. Now, that only applies to the base camera. The lock-on camera was like that before also, you always had the regular room. And the system is kind of different, now the lock on camera only let it forces you to look at the target that you've got. I may still change it in the future, but for now this works. And speaking of targets, here's a new character, here's, here's Lilith. The model, it still needs a few changes, but overall it's here. What I really like is the Seder. Like, that Seder I spent some time trying to figure out. I also lost it once and had to make it again, but I feel like the result is pretty nice. Here it is a bit more on the round area. It's not easy to put it at the center of the camera, but as you can see it's got a lot of layers of stars. And here she is actually in game. She doesn't have any animations yet, but she is one of the main characters in the game. So eventually I'll work on that. So. A few more changes. First of all, um, you probably won't remember that, but if you if you played the game, which there's no demo, so I don't know how, but let's say you played the game, um, you might remember that get into a sprint mode, it took like 5 seconds, it took a while. Now that's pretty much instant, after a second or so, you're gonna start sprinting. And that's because I'm starting to work on a few different mobility changes. So, since how the player moves around, the buttons that they use to move around, stuff like that. So the very first, the very first, first things <laughs> that I decided on doing, just to make the sprint a lot less painful to figure out. So now, you just enter a sprint mode after a few seconds or so, after a second or so. Like it might be a bit less, a bit more, I don't remember, but it's about a, about a second. Now, to enter the sprint mode, you need to be on the ground, so there are situations where you might not have your full speed. Like let's say if you grab a ledge, then for the, for the time that you're midair, you're not gonna have that much speed. And I feel like that makes sense from a physics perspective also. But mostly it's now easy to enter a sprint. And there's not really a reason to have some complicated system for it. Just let the player sprint. <laughs> I might change the, value, the values a bit, but it's mostly gonna be like that. Now, there's going to be a lot more mobility changes. 
like I want some sort of grapple attack for the player just something to let them get to the enemies more easily like let's say you've got an enemy locked in and you can, pre you can press a button to make the player kind of jump towards them I'm still work I am working towards that if you notice like the floating hand on Keklet's weapon uh, this is what I'm working towards so um, this is still in progress I might make a uh, I made the dev blog about it later on. But this is part of the mobility changes. And the mobility changes, another thing I had to do to set them up was to kind of free a few buttons. So now instead of having one button for to use items, one button to change characters, one button to change forms, it's all in one menu right here. So you can go to the items, it shows you the item menu. You can go to players, it changes the player. And this is just a temporary solution. I am going to make a better menu for that. But for now you can just go to the players and switch randomly between them. There's also a menu for forms which I haven't got gotten to work on yet. And on for abilities. This is kinda gonna act like magic or more like special attacks. So let's say you do damage to enemies, you build up a meter. After a while you use it as some sort of attack. You can choose one of many attacks that you've unlocked. I'm not entirely sure how this system is gonna work yet, but this is something that I've wanted to do for a while. And now that there's one button for all of this, it's a lot easier. It's the perfect opportunity. So yeah, these are pretty much the changes that I've been working on. I don't think there's anything else. But... If there is, I suppose I'm gonna show it in the next devlog. There were a few small changes that I did that mostly have to do with how the rooms work. How now this is a room on its own, for example. The mainland candy land is not in the background. But um, normally when you are playing the game, it's going to be loaded asynchronously, so the two areas are gonna be uh, it's in uh, it's in together. Well, then I might actually be able to showcase that if there is the if there is a proper load uh, stuff to load. Don't remember exactly. But yeah, let's see. If this loads, wait, it seems to be frozen. There might be some error. Okay, maybe not. So yeah, like you can load since asynchronous uh, asynchronously. So. <laughs> Let's do another load. This might be a bit broken, but normally you're supposed to, to be able to, to load multiple sin, multiple sins at once. And I've worked towards that system, so now you can more easily do that. I suppose I might have broken it one way or another. Since yeah, I experimented a lot, so maybe the system is kinda broken right now. But I guess, trust me, it is there. You should be able to jump from one thing to another. So yeah, this is all for now. Thanks for coming, and... I suppose the usual, you're gonna get more frequent updates on Twitter or Discord. Whatever works for you. And see you later. So yeah, this is actually a pretty nice stage. Using old assets, but it's nice. So yeah, see you later.